Hi, I'm Debbie Wilson and will summarise the work that Snowflake Software undertook in the pilot to load, maintain and publish static and dynamic SAA data uses an OGC web feature service and an event adapter. So what is a WFS? It's essentially a generic web service enabling fine-grained access to XML data using a comprehensive set of query operations and filter parameters. And the WFS can be used for data exchanged or used directly within decision support applications. It can also be used for data maintenance via the transaction operations. Within our architecture, neither the WFS or the event adapter connect directly to the SAA data feeds. Instead, they're downloaded and maintained within a local database as we need to transform, add to and generate new data and validate the data before publishing via the services. This approach has many benefits, as once configured, it can automatically maintain data in real time, which is then made immediately accessible via the services. The static and dynamic information are integrated into a single authoritative source, enabling us to enhance and better quality assure the data. And by integrating the static and dynamic data into the single source, it enables on-the-fly enhancement of event messages. Getting the data maintenance side right was the key focus of our effort as the data publishing components were developed using our Go Publisher product suite which required no further enhancement during the pilot. Go Publisher desktop was used to configure the mappings and transformations required to convert the data from the AXM51 database schema into the SAA AXM51 format and the digital notum event specification format. Go Publisher WFS provided all of the functionality for the WFS 2.0 adapter, and Go Publisher Agent was used to automatically generate event messages, which were then pushed to the event service using an event pusher. We focused on flight dispatch and planning decision support scenarios to demonstrate how the WFS can be used to answer typical questions of varying complexity. For example, show me all the active airspaces that might impact my route during the time frame of a flight. Identify possible alternate destination airports based on specific requirements of an aircraft. And finally, identify which runway to land on in case one or more are closed due to maintenance or adverse weather. The client demonstrations shall show you how to use the WFS to ask such questions, but I'll now go on to show you some of the other functions that the WFS supports that they won't show. So, what other things can you do with the WFS other than return complete features? Well, there may be times when you want to know how many features correspond to the result of a query. For example, how many unit features were updated in the last airing cycle? So to do this, you simply define a get feature request, and instead of asking it for, for the data, you simply add in an additional parameter called result type, and set this to hit, and it will then return you a count, total count of the number of features that, are, that correspond to the query. So in this example, we can see that two units were updated between ERIC cycles. So another useful piece of functionality is the get property value operation, which allows you to simply get the values for a specific property rather than the full feature. For example, you might be interested in knowing what the transmission frequency of a specific radio communication channel is. So instead of requesting the whole feature, only the value is returned. This is really useful when you want to keep the amount of information exchanged to a minimum. Finally, the last call function are stored queries. These allow server administrators to predefine common queries for reuse and can be defined for get feature and get property value operations. They offer several benefits as you can control the queries posted to the server. It simplifies client integration with the service as it removes the need to support full ad hoc querying capabilities and you can also develop RESTful APIs on top of them. Some examples include get current airspace by ID or designator, get SAA message by identifier or list units. So to conclude, we've successfully demonstrated that it's possible to develop OGC services on top of the SAA data feeds and extend their functionality. Our commercial software GoLoader and GoPublisher enabled us to configure the services to publish the data as AXM51 from an AXM50 data store and implement the temporality model. By integrating the static and dynamic data and making them accessible via a single set of services simplifies and provides, improves access to information by clients and improves data integrity and consistency. 
The WFS can also be configured to support multiple end users, which offers another set of business benefits, such as more rapid and cost-effective application development, reduced overall operating costs, all of which increase the return on investment. And finally, the WFS was proven to support the SWIM requirements, for example, support SOAP, and can also be deployed onto the VUES ESB. So thanks for watching my video and um, if you've got any further questions please don't hesitate to ask.